Okay, so there are three ways that you can solve a system of equations. So first of all, main idea is that um, you are looking for an x, y that makes these equations true. So for instance, on this problem, we're looking for some x plus some y that will also work up here in x and y. So for instance, it could be 2 plus 1 is 3, and then 3 times 2 minus 2 times 1 would have to be negative 6. And that doesn't work, I can see that right now, but that's the idea. Okay, so let's start by substitution here. So we'll go, we'll solve by substitution. Now when you're using substitution, the idea is you want to have one of the equations saying either x equals or y equals. Okay, that makes sense? So we want it to either say x equals or y equals. It doesn't matter which one it is at all. So which one of these equations do you think the top one or the bottom one would be easiest to solve for either x or y? Eric? The bottom. The bottom. Okay, what do you want to solve for here at the bottom? X. X. So we can solve for either one of these. X or y are both re really easy to solve for. Okay. And if we're going to solve for x, so we have this equation. We want to solve for x. What is the first step, or how would you solve for x, Ryan? Right, so we want to make it say x equals, so we want to say x equals, so if you subtract y from both sides here, you get x equals 3 minus y. So there's your new equation right there. So now the way I look at it is we still have, we have two equations. We have this one, the one we haven't touched yet, and then this transformed one with x equals. Ryan? Are we, are we doing substitution, right? Yes, we're doing substitution right now. And then, okay, so, okay. so now at this point, I'm going to bring down this other equation here and just put it right there, just so we can see the two equations we're working with now. Okay, so now... The whole idea here is to substitute, which means to take something out and put something else in. And that's a, that's a tough step here. So the whole reason that we got this to say x equals something or y equals something is so now wherever there's an x or a y down here, we can substitute that in for it. So here we made it say x equals, right? So I'm going to take this x out right here and substitute 3 minus y in for it. So again, I'm going to take in this. We have x equals this stuff, right? So I can take this x out, and x equals 3 minus y. And I got that from right here, that x equals 3 minus y. So now everything else is going to stay the same. I still have a 3 times the x. So I have 3 times 3 minus y minus 2y equals negative 6. And this becomes the algebraic stuff, which, you know what, too many of us mess up on, and it just happens. So what's the first thing I would do to solve this equation right here? Distribute. Distribute. So I can multiply 3 times 3. That's 9. 3 times negative y. That's negative 3y. Minus 2y equals negative 6. Okay. I need the y to be all by itself. It's already on the one side. So we want y to be all on one side by itself. The y's are already on the left side of the equal sign. So we combine these. So we have a negative 3y and a negative 2y. Negative 5y. So we have 9 minus 5y equals negative 6. When I'm solving these, I usually look at I usually look at each one of these as I have a 9, a negative 3y, a negative 2y, and a negative 6. And I'm just going to combine them together to make a negative 5y. I don't see that as a 9 minus. Okay. Now we want to solve this for y, so I'm going to go back up to the top here. And I have 9 minus 5y equals negative 6. So now how do I get the y by itself? Nate? Or Ryan? Sorry. Well, we already have the y by itself, so we're going to leave the 5y by itself. So you would add negative 
or plus or add six to what's Well, we want to get we want to get the number over here by itself. Nick, subtract nine. Subtract the nine. See, we have the numbers. The y's are already on the left side, so we want to move those numbers to the right side. So subtract the nine from both sides, and now the y is by itself. We combine those. Now we have negative five y equals negative fifteen. Divide by negative five. What does y equal? Positive three, because you have a, a negative divided by a negative. It's positive three. So now we know that y equals three. Well, we can use any one of these equations here. I'll go ahead and use this x plus y <coughs> equals three. That was this equation we originally had. And now y is three. So I can substitute in three for y. I get x plus three equals three. So what does x equal then? Zero. Zero. X equals zero, right? So we already had y equals three, x equals zero. So our final answer would be zero, zero comma three. Questions on that one? Now we're doing all three of these on the one problem. If I had a choice of what to use, substitutions ranks up there. It's, it's relatively easy on this one because you had these x's and y's with, no, with a, a coefficient of one, no numbers out in front. So it's pretty easy to solve for it. If I didn't have that, I wouldn't use substitution at all because then it makes it a little bit harder. Okay, let's look at the next one here. Same problem. Different method. Now we're going to use elimination. Now elimination uses a lot of substitution ideas. We're still number five here, but we're using elimination because you're supposed to use all three. So we want to solve this by elimination. So the whole goal here is to look at our numbers here, our coefficients for our x's, our coefficients for our y's, and the goal is to eliminate one of them. So if I want to eliminate one of these, Whoa, that's a lightsaber. Yeah, so I want to eliminate, let's, I want to eliminate these Y's. All right, so what do I need, what do I need to have to eliminate? I need these to be opposites. Eliminate means to add and make it to equal to zero, right? So if I want to eliminate my Y's here, what do I need to add to the, or sorry, what do I need this to be right here in order for these to add to zero. Two. I want it to be a two, positive two. It could be negative and we can subtract it or it could be a positive two and we could just add it. You see what I'm saying? Because okay. this is already a negative two y. So I'm looking at this and go, oh, this is already a negative two y. I need a two right here because then when I add them, it could become zero. So because of that, I want to multiply everything to give me a two in front of there. So I'm going to multiply everything by two. two. So I get 2x plus 2y equals 6. I'm going to just bring this one down again. I like to bring it down just so I can see that what I'm working with here. That's 3x minus 2y equals negative 6. And hopefully you're seeing why I did that, why we multiplied it by 2, because now we can do a little lightsaber action and be like... Take it out, right there. All right, so now we add straight down. 2x plus 3x is 5x. 2y minus a plus a negative 2y is 0. That's the whole reason. That, that's our elimination. We eliminated the y. So that's 0. That's gone. Equals, and then what's 6 plus negative 6? 0. OK. I want to solve for x, so what do I do? Divide by 5. What's 0 divided by 5? 0. x is 0. I have my x done. I can go back up to my original one. This is going to be the same answer as last time.
I think uh, I think the idea. I mean, when I was in high school, I knew how to do substitution really well, and graphing was too. I wasn't very good at eliminating, so I just learned one of them. And yeah, it's up to you. I mean, the thing is, if you know how to do one, then I'm okay with that. But a lot of teachers like to see you be able to do all three, the skill for all three. Okay, so we eliminated this one, and we have x is zero, so I can take this x is zero and just substitute it in there. So I get zero plus y equals three. So what's y equal? Three. Y equals three. And it's the same answer as before. It's the same problem. We have zero comma three. Now this problem, if I were to do an algebraic way, I would graph, sorry, I would use elimination here because when I look at these problems, and for me it's like, okay, these line up already. Let's use a different uh, little pointer. So these already line up. So my x's line up, my y's line up, my numbers line up. It's, it's kind of set up to eliminate already. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm looking for when I'm using elimination. Okay, the last method here is the graphing method. So we want to solve this by graphing. So now we're going to go ahead and use a graphing calculator. <laughs> we can spend a whole day, again, on how to graph by hand. But, you know, the idea is just to graph and find an intersection point. So the whole idea here is that if I have these two equations and I graph them, I'll find an intersection point where they cross. That makes sense? So um, let's go ahead and graph these. Well, here's the thing. If you're going to use a graphing calculator, you're going to have to put it in a y equals form first. Okay? So that's one thing. You're going to have to put it in y equals form first. So, which one of these is the easiest one to put in y equals form? The bottom. The bottom, yeah. We want to make this say y equals. So, we did it, we made this say x equals before, but let's go ahead and do y equals. So, how would I make that say y equals? Subtract x on that side. Subtract x to both sides. So, you end up with y equals 3 minus x. You could have done negative x plus 3, 2. That would work. Okay, so that one's done. Check mark. I'm ready to graph that one on a graphing calculator. Okay, the second one here, or the top one, I'm going to rewrite again here so I don't lose it. I have 3x minus 2y equals negative 6. And I want it to say y equals. So if I look at this left side, I already have a y right here. Everything else is kind of out here. i got to get move all this stuff to the right side. So what's my first step in moving everything to the right side there? Minus the x, minus the x. Minus the x right? So the x is 3x. So let's go ahead and minus 3x. And we have negative 2y equals negative 6 minus 3x. A lot of times when you're graphing these by hand, you want to have these in a specific order. You don't need to. The calculator does it for you. So we're going to let the calculator work. Okay, I'm going to solve for y here. So what's the next thing you should do? Divide, Divide by negative 2. Now here's the funny thing. If I were graphing in a calculator, I would just leave it like that. Wait, like are, are you doing the divided by 2 from the 6 and the and 3? Yes, that's a good point. That is a divided by negative 2 by the negative, by the six, the negative 6 and the negative 3. So if I were to do a final, like, simplification, negative 6 divided by negative 2, that's 3. We solve for another equation. And then uh, and we have 3, negative 3 over negative 2 is just a 3 over 2, so it'd be plus 3 halves x. So that's the simplified form. That's a simplified form. But I, you could have left it like this. So now I'm going to take a second here. I'm going to graph it on the calculator, and we're going to see where it intersects. Was it any okay, so I went ahead and graphed it um, and took a picture of it and put it in here. That's what your picture looks like. And if you can see the intersection point, what's that intersection point right there? Zero three. Zero three, which was the answer on the other two. So that's the idea is where the intersection point is. Now if you use a graphing calculator, you can either trace to find the intersection or use the intersect button. 
which is under the calc screen. Okay, I use GeoGebra for this, so that was a little bit easier to find the intersection point. Okay, 